didn't hand over his army to the king. I should keep looking around Place Dauphine. Colonel Armand. He died in the attack. Yellow cartridges. The conspirator's secret sin. There was most certainly a conspiracy. I should keep looking around Place Dauphine. A headquarters at the Pont au Change. By all appearances, it's not official. Most likely an underground hiding place that can be entered from the riverbank. I'll try to track down Capitaine Lefebvre. If he and his men withdrew to the Société des Amis des Noirs, he must have gone towards the Châtelet. It would have been a desperate move for certain. I doubt any of them survived the retreat. Just steps from their goal. York? What does that mean?
This place must be studied carefully. The document bears the signature of the Marquis de Lafayette. So the rumors were true. The guardian's man was informed spontaneously. All of this was carefully orchestrated. Every time the Marquis de Lafayette explained himself. Happy birthday, my sweet daughter. I can't believe it. The dancer you promised me. She's magnificent. You're the best papa ever. <laughs> Hello. Tell me, will you give her a name?
Citroën Laclau. Can I help you, madame? The representatives of the people are asking for your help, monsieur. Who exactly are you talking about? The patriots and representatives of the Third Estate who escaped the massacre. I need names, madame. Monsieur de Robespierre, Monsieur Lavoisier, the Marquis de Lafayette. All these men have declared themselves enemies of the cause to which we have sworn allegiance to. Is there any cause more important than saving the nation? No, of course not. And what do these so-called defenders of the people want from me? They believe they have found a way to neutralize the Royal Automats for good. And to do it, they beg you to give them one of the explosive cannonballs you invented. Ma foi. If there is a way to stop these death machines, then I have a duty to assist them. But you must understand that I shall remain on my guard. When doing deals with the enemy, you must take precautions for when the game ends. If that's how you feel, then by all means take steps to ensure your safety. Let me think. Where are the representatives? At the Couvent des Cordeliers. Very well. Here's what we're going to do. I will go to the convent immediately and try to negotiate a truce. As for you, here is the key to a trunk in the next room. It contains a prototype of my cannonball, as well as the patents and pages that explain how to manufacture it. Bring all of this to me at the convent. However, do not give me anything unless I specifically request it. Is that clear? Perfectly clear, monsieur. I will follow your instructions.
called, madame? Aegis, thank heavens you're here. We're under siege. In the courtyard. One of the king's creatures. It seems determined to destroy the chateau walls. It's as if it came here for us. Here is the key to the gate. It will lead you to the courtyard. Hurry. Our lives are in your hands.
Queen, don't! Run, madame! No! Optimista, that thing, it's staring at you. You're safe, madame. Mon dieu. Ages. Why did this abomination attack us? I think you know, madame. You saw how it obeyed you when you ordered it to stop fighting. I don't understand a word of this nonsense. I'm afraid your guardian angel seems to have a few screws loose, my queen. No. You must listen to me. That creature was not trying to destroy you, madame. It was trying to be near you. Listen to your heart. You know what it was. You know whose soul animated those cogs. Stop it, please. Just stop. You must know the truth. Everything is there, written in the King's own hand. How he ordered your son to be put to death. How he bound his soul to the machine I just destroyed. How they were unable to control this hateful thing. My baby. Oh, my queen. My poor angel. In the hell he suffered. Wanted only to seek his mother's comfort. No. No. Curse you, Louis. The Butcher King. Murderer. Destroyer of innocence. He will pay for this unspeakable crime with his own head. I swear it on my life. No, Antonio, my dear friend. Do not give in to this madness. Leave us, Aegis. I must speak privately with Madame de Polignac. Very well, Madame.
madame. These gentlemen and I have come to an agreement. That is good news. We will resolve our differences when the time comes. The matter is settled. You can count on it, Laclou. But now it is clear that we are fighting the same adversary. Adversary? You are rather indulgent, Monsieur le Marquis. It seems that you are still fond of him, despite his heinous crimes. Oh, de grâce. Truly, the king is no more than a wild beast. And together, in large numbers, we will hunt him down. Madame, please give the model and the engineering notes to Monsieur de Robespierre. However, you shall hold on to the patents. No one knows what the future may hold. Let there be peace between you, gentlemen, for there is still much work to be done. We believe we now have a way to destroy the lanterns. Without them, the machines will no longer be able to carry out their sinister task. But it is still just a strategy, which needs to be tested. And even a conclusive experiment will not guarantee our success. Where will we find a working cannon? How will we get more vitriol? How will we make more cannonballs? Please, I ask each of you to set to work without delay. Pour la nation, monsieur. Pour la nation. Pour la nation. Pour la nation. Citoyen Lavoisier. What can I do for you, Aegis? I found the powder. It was at the Bastille. Did you do what needed to be done? Yes. There is nothing more to fear from it. What do you mean, nothing more to fear from it? I flooded the cellars where the powder was stored. Bon sang! Lavoisier! Why did you put our fate in the hands of a cursed machine? This machine, as you say, just saved you from certain annihilation. No, you have rendered us impotent. Come now, monsieur. Get a hold of yourself. Mon dieu! Everything I attempt seems doomed to fail. I fear we no longer have any chance of winning this war. Please, calm yourself. What you fear is the loss of your own personal interests. Everyone here is convinced of this. Ugh. Goodbye, Citroën Lavoisier. And down with despotism. Citoire Mirabeau. I found a broken cane. It says Franciscus Antonius on it. Do you know who it belongs to? Well, I never. Yes, I know the owner. And I'm willing to bet you're looking for a certain François Antoine. That's right. Well, you'd need to look a little further east, mademoiselle. Across the Rhine, for a start. Because this cane belongs or belonged to a certain Franz Anton Mesmer. Mesmer, the Prince of Charlatans. Good heavens, it's been a long time since I've heard his name. Five years to be exact since your learned commission denounced his theories. It wasn't long after that when he disappeared. Mesmer, Eugène de Vaucanson said that name before he died. Can you tell me more about him? He was a mystical healer who was once popular with the upper class. I myself attended several of his sessions. You mentioned a commission. The king did not look kindly on the healer's popularity within the court. This led him to appoint a commission from the Royal Academy of Sciences. An institution to which Monsieur Bailly and I have the honor to belong. We were asked to investigate his alleged powers. The experiments that we performed allowed us to determine that Monsieur Mesmer's activities were pure charlatanism, a conclusion that destroyed his successful career the moment it was published. But there was something, Sylvain, a tiny flow of energy that my devices were able to measure. My dear colleague, must I remind you again that we were never able to reproduce your observations? It was obviously a momentary failure of your equipment. Perhaps. I'd like to be sure of it. When and how did Monsieur Mesmer disappear? The denunciation of his techniques was the start of a long descent into hell for Monsieur Mesmer. He was abandoned by his clients and resumed his research in virtual secrecy. 
I think he was hoping to perfect his so-called science and restore his reputation with the Academy. A hope that led him to associate himself with that dastardly Cagliostro. God only knows what experiments they may have carried out. In any case, their collaboration did not last long. Monsieur Mesmer left the kingdom overnight to return to his mother country. Why did he leave so quickly? That is a mystery. But those who saw him that morning say it was as if he had the devil at his heels. This is true. He left in such a hurry that he abandoned everything he owned. Furniture, belongings, and scientific equipment. And it seems that Cagliostro has inherited this treasure. Is that so? Well, if what you say is true, that broken cane must have passed into the Count's hands. Yes, it's likely. This adventurer from who knows where is quite the mysterious character. And he has been very busy recently. I've been able to observe him from my apartment, making frequent visits to Rue Saint-Honoré, on the Tuileries side. I wonder what he was doing there. What were Monsieur Mesmer's theories? He is a proponent of a theory called animal magnetism. He claimed to be able to channel a purported universal healing fluid by passing his hands over patients and using magnets. He also cobbled together a whole array of mad devices, each stranger than the last. Unfortunately, despite all his attempts, I don't know that he ever cured anyone. What happened during Monsieur Mesmer's treatment sessions? Oh, they were quite a spectacle to behold. Imagine well-born ladies afflicted with perfectly imaginary illnesses. A dimly lit room where incense has been burned to intoxicate the soul and cloud your vision. Amiable servants, half-dressed, gliding from countess to duchess to the sound of a sensual melody. And the great Mesmer, a doctor with wandering hands, presiding over the wonderful scene. Oh, you should have seen them. Those grand ladies moaning, crying, and falling into a swoon, clinging to that strange tub. Du théâtre, ma chère. Pure theater. Citoyen Mirabeau. Unfortunately, I come bearing sad news. Go on, Aegis. There is no need to spare me. This is about my mother, isn't it? Indeed. The Countess is no longer of this world. Yes, yes. It was to be feared. I knew she was lost a long time ago. The poor woman. At last she has been delivered from the madness that drove her into the gutter. It gets worse. Worse, you say? Your mother did not die of poverty. She was killed. Murdered? No. No. My father. The rabid dog made good on his threat. May he roast in the fires of hell for all eternity. As for you, Bishop, do you finally understand the man's true nature? How much longer will you protect this demon? I share your grief, Monsieur de Mirabeau, but the secrets of... Enough! You sanctimonious bigot! Is it not enough for you to serve the people absurd fables that condemn them to ignorance? Must you also submit to the whims of a malicious old brute, the scourge of his own family? Speak! Speak now, or so help me, I will send you to meet your maker. Please, monsieur, let us not get carried away. Out of, out of respect for your grief, and given the extraordinary circumstances, I consent to enlighten you. I am listening, monseigneur. I admit that your father is an unusual person, inhabited by an anger whose source is undetermined. He blamed you, you, your sister, and your poor mother for all of his misfortunes. I stayed by his bedside an entire night. I preached about mercy and the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ha! <laughs> that must have gone over well. Do not mock me, Monsieur de Mirabeau. At dawn, I finally got Monsieur le Marquis to see the error of his ways. Before God, he extended forgiveness to all those he had previously condemned. However, he did not give up his plans for revenge. The fate reserved for my mother is proof of this. In fact, Monsieur, he did. He even gave me a leather wallet containing, in his words, 
the instrument of your punishment. He asked me to dispose of it. Unfortunately, your mother's fate was already sealed. Orders had been given. There was nothing more that could be done. The poor soul. He was in tears. His body racked with sobs. <laughs> My heart breaks to hear it. What was in the wallet? I don't know, monsieur. I did not open it. In that case, I ask you to give it to me now. I cannot, monsieur. When I was captured, the wallet fell into the hands of the Comte de Caliostro. No, 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 Aegis. Do you realize what this means? This wallet contains my father's sentences for his children. Me, of course, but also my sister, the Marquise de Cabri. You must find it at all costs. Our fate is in your hands. Cagliostro must have put it in a safe place. Somewhere known only to him. The Marquise de Capri, dites-vous? Yes, that is my sister Louise's title. Fortune favors you today. It so happens that I already have this wallet. It was in a secret workshop by the Tuileries, where the Count conducts his sinister experiments. Oh, how fortunate. What does it contain? Two envelopes addressed to the Lieutenant General de Police. One of them had this letter in it. It concerns your sister, the Marquise de Cabri. Let's see. A letter de cachet signed by my father. He gave orders to have my sister locked up in a convent. His unique variety of fatherly love is unmistakable. What was in the second envelope? It is empty. Empty? Mon Dieu. You don't have to be a genius to guess that it contained a similar document, this time concerning myself. If the envelope was empty, it means that this letter has already been delivered to its recipient. By Cagliostro, no doubt. The monster must have felt a perverse sense of joy as he devoured its contents. Aegis, you must retrieve this letter at all costs. If the Lieutenant General attaches a seal and gives it to his underlings at the Châtelet, I am done for. Where does this Lieutenant General reside? Oh, right by the fortress. He's a dutiful man and prides himself on never straying too far from it. Please hurry, I beg of you. General Lafayette. Do you need help, Aegis? You lied to me, General. Now I know all about your machinations. And what could you possibly think you know? I know that you raised the National Guard for the sole purpose of taking command of it. There was nothing spontaneous about the uprising. Do you have any evidence to support your accusations? I do. I have the manifesto. Bon sang. Why resort to this manipulation? You must understand. What I have done, I did for the good of the Kingdom. I wanted to stop this massacre while protecting the Queen and the Dauphin. In the name of the people, Aegis. But an actual uprising of the people would have inevitably led to disaster. Only professional soldiers could organize and lead the resistance. Who were your accomplices? My brothers in arms. The brave men of the Régiment de Saint-Onge. Veterans of the American War. Men who, at the Battle of Yorktown, brought an empire to its knees. Alas, we gravely underestimated the enemy's forces. We thought we would face an infantry supported by a handful of machines, but an entire army of automats. It was unthinkable. Some accuse you of harboring a lust for power. The circumstances were to your advantage. These aspersions are all too familiar to me, but Tell me, if I wanted the crown for myself, why did I not take it when I returned from America? When I had seasoned troops at my command and the people sang my praises with one voice? No, that makes no sense. Though I readily admit that I do believe I am worthy of fulfilling an important role for the queen after her son is crowned. Lieutenant General of the Kingdom, for example. Or even, if circumstance requires, the Regent. Voila. Now you know everything. I haven't left anything out. However, this truth, if it were made public, would play right into my enemy's hands. 
So I ask you not to reveal anything I've just told you, and to give me the manifesto. C'est entendu, General. Here. Aegis, by doing this, you're not saving my honor. You're saving the future of the entire kingdom. Oh, and one more thing. Can you tell me where I can find my detractor? The one who told you the rumors about me? He comes and goes. One day he's here, one day he's there. It would be pointless to try to confront him. Oh, no matter. I will not let this serpent continue to vilify me. I shall get redress for these aspersions in the end. Do as you wish, General de Lafayette. Goodbye, General Lafayette. Citoyen Marat. Madame? I'm surprised to find you here. Did you follow me? Didn't you know? The Duke's allies are always impeccably informed. Some even say that we have eyes and ears everywhere. What do you want from me? To tell you the truth, I can't wait to hear what you've discovered about the matter at hand. And I was afraid you might leave me in the lurch. You can never be too cautious these days. That's why I decided it would be better for me to come to you. You were right. Lafayette was behind this purportedly popular uprising. Aha! I've got him at last! But he had no intention of handing his men over to the king. His goal was to raise an army and command the troops himself. It doesn't matter. These troops would have allowed him to crush the patriots and set himself up as a dictator. He lied to the people. He lied to the Assemblée Nationale. His time has come. All I need is for you to give me the proof of his treason. I have no proof, monsieur. You will have to be satisfied with my word. Your word? What good is your word to me? Do you think I can convince people by repeating baseless accusations? Believe me, I have tried, but without much success. No, it's useless. I must admit defeat. We will have either the King or Lafayette, one despot or another. In either case, my fate is sealed. I will soon join the Duke in exile, and I will abandon my beloved people to their doom. I have no other choice.
Monsieur de Mirabeau so terrified. I shall deliver it to him shortly. Citoyen Mirabeau. Here is the letter sent by your father to the Lieutenant General de Police. You were right. Oh. <laughs> Mon Dieu. So this is what the cur had in store for me. A new lettre de cachet with the royal seal. He sentenced me to spend the rest of my days in the Chateau de Vincennes. To return to the cell where he had me locked up twelve years ago. Those ten square feet where I lay at death's door for forty-two months on end. Fourteen seasons spent with chattering teeth, coughing up a bucket full of bile and blood every day. Your own father had you thrown in jail. Alas, such is the sad truth. What crime did he hold you to be guilty of? He disapproved of the follies of the young man I was back then and my love for a certain someone. A woman whom an unjust law kept me apart from. I was free and besotted with happiness, Aegis. And that was a crime in the eyes of my father, the Marquis. I sullied the Mirabeau name, 
So he felt it necessary to steal my youth and clap his wayward son in irons. What does this letter matter in the face of the mortal peril that hangs over all the king's enemies? You must put yourself in my shoes to understand. If the king wins this war, he will send all the brave men here to the scaffold, and I am certain they will climb the steps with their heads held high. But if you hadn't taken that letter, I would have suffered a far darker fate. Louis the Mad would have made it his duty to respect my father's last wishes, but I would rather die, whether a hero or a coward, than return to Vincennes. There is no worse hell on earth than that infernal dungeon. Was there no trial? One would imagine. Those damned lettres de cachet. For centuries, a powerful man, whether a king or a father, needs simply put pen to paper, and an innocent man is thrown into prison. The poor soul sees neither judge nor lawyer. In the space of an hour, he moves from the light into darkness, and his cries for help fall futilely on the cold stone of the dungeon walls. I am just one of many victims, whose ranks range from the most famous to the most lowly, from Voltaire and Diderot to the unfortunate children whose dark fates will never be known. In any case, I must now express my eternal gratitude, even though no words, no matter how eloquent, can express its depth. I owe everything to you, Aegis. You, who've broken my chains forever. Whatever happens now, I will be free to live or die for the nation. As for the Marquis de Mirabeau, that criminal whom misfortune chose as my father, let us consider him dead, shall we? Let him choke on loneliness and regret once and for all.
come back to us. Oh, my child. My sweet child. It's all right, my queen. He stopped shouting. The doctors are with him. <gasps> when will they let me hold him? Don't worry. I'm sure oh. that... <gasps> oh, look. He's moving. My son. Oh, my son. Grâce à Dieu. We've done it! He's alive, Gabriel! Yes, my queen, he has been saved! Praise be to the good Dr. Le Monnier! Grand Dieu! What's going on, Gabriel? Dear, stand back, Your Majesty! Silence, everyone! Louis ah! Hear my voice! My child! Ah! Oh, Monsieur! Oh, what on earth? Your Majesty, we must retreat. Leave this, you go! Oh, oh my queen! Oh, no! I have to close that door! De Caras, let me see him! No, madam, it is over. You must go to Versailles. No, my son! My darling angel! <laughs>
Lady Trianor is at the end of this path. I cannot get to it. I'll have to enter the labyrinth.
Our plan is foolproof. Monsieur Cléry will be waiting for you at Gros Caillou at the appointed time. But I warn you, do not be late. Don't worry, Monsieur. I will not fail you. Very well. As for the rest, everything is explained in this letter. Mesdames, the die is cast. In a week, God willing, you will be in Vienna, and the children under the Emperor's protection. Quiet, someone is coming. Monsieur, you must leave. Your Grace. Monsieur, to what do we owe this honor? Mesdames, we are in grave danger. In Paris, the people are up in arms. I've been informed that the rebels are marching on the palace. What do you mean? There is no need to be alarmed. You are to be taken to saint Cloud and placed under competent protection. Have your people prepare your things. You will leave Versailles in an hour. Oh, mon dieu. All is lost. Ages! Here you are at last. You've come at just the right time. Madame, go and find the children. We must get going. No, monsieur. Let's wait a little longer, please. The children here? At the Petit Trianon? Yes. They are upstairs in the Queen's room. General, you and I both know what is coming. You must take them to safety, post-haste. No, it's out of the question. I will not leave without Her Majesty. What happened to the Queen? Something curious is going on here. The Ujamats will not come within a hundred paces. The King's orders, no doubt. He wants to protect his children from his own Ultimats. Sadly, the Queen... What you told her about the death of her son has troubled her mind. She rushed to the palace despite the danger. She intends to see the King and make him pay for what he has done. There was nothing we could do. We could not dissuade her. Run and get the children. They must not remain at Versailles any longer. Have no fear, madame. I will take you to a place where all three of you will be safe. I will help Her Majesty. Dieu veut vivre mon aide. I place my last hope in you. Don't delay, Aegis. Our companions are ready to take the palace as soon as you have destroyed its protectors. I will join you when I have completed my task.
The key. But I gave it to you earlier. Please, it's no matter. Once again, we were treated to a charming show. Oh, it was much more than that, Monsieur de Vaucanson. This automatis masterpiece. A mechanical marvel. It could do much more than dance, ne croyez-vous pas?
Estates General brandish the threat of rebellion. There is plotting afoot. They are stirring up the populace. Worse, they are making pacts. A number of representatives of the nobility and the clergy have taken up the cause of the Third Estate. As for my army, there is not a man among them I can trust. That is why I have made new arrangements for you. From now on, the Swiss Guard will no longer be protecting you. Then who will, my love? Take a look for yourself. And be assured you are in sturdier hands. Uh, what... Uh, whatever do you mean? Isn't that... Rutia? Monsieur Vercossel's dancing doll? Appearances can be deceiving, mesdames. The Count has made extraordinary improvements to this automat. Aegis, this is Her Majesty the Queen. You are now to serve her. Make sure no harm comes to her, and obey the orders she will give you. Madame, I am at your service. But Alyssa? He can speak. This makes no sense. This is sorcery. Make no mistake, Madame, it is science which we owe to the work of the Count. And which will soon be made known to the entire world.
You struggle in vain, dancer. You're not long for this world. against its master. I am quite happy to concede this point, but what about the Count? Have you forgotten that he gave you life and whispered the order that animates you? Look how he runs, the coward! Do you understand what he has in mind? La pauvre enfant, sleeping so sweetly, she won't be dreaming for long now! Garçon! Atenaeus! Don't move! The time has come to set you free, Aegis. This whore's soul has poisoned your cogs for too long. Adieu, sad puppet. No! Auntie Devine, I don't want to die. Nice. The sun is rising, and you have slept for far too long. The beauty of this world longs for you, just as you long for its light. For you are like the flowers that open in the morning. I know you, mon ami. We loved each other. Vous en souviens-t-il? <laughs> you gave me your heart. So please, let me give you mine today. Vive heureuse, Atenaeus. For it is happily that I leave this world. Monsieur, we have the king. It is now up to us to wield his scepter. In this trying time, crucial decisions must be made without delay. First and foremost, we must take back Paris. And how do we do that, mon dieu? There are automats everywhere, and they are constantly regenerated by their crimes. My strategy is the only viable solution. Monsieur Laclos' cannonballs filled with vitriol. And where will we find the means to carry out your plan? The city of Versailles is full of ateliers and shops. Moreover, as far as we have been able to see, the King's army has barely been deployed there. And it will not be too risky to look around. Very well. Now, 
Regaining control of Paris depends on our combined efforts. Mais ensuite, once peace has been restored, what of the kingdom? This is indeed a crucial issue. Leaving the nation without a government would expose it to the greatest danger. Worse, it would condemn it to civil war. Eh bien quoi, monsieur? Can you not govern together? Unfortunately, the disagreements that divide our assembly run far too deep. That which we can agree is that we have been given a chance to choose the person who shall succeed the tyrant. I claim this honor. Excuse me? For what reason, je vous prie? Enfin, simply consider the arguments for it. Speak, Monsieur le Marquis. You have our full attention. To begin with, I rescued the Dauphin from his father's clutches and ensured the dynasty's stability. The child will reign as Henri V. We will appoint someone with great wisdom to act as regent until he comes of age. Fie. The people do not need a crowned puppet. Yes, they do. Now more than ever before. Once the Assembly has adopted a constitution, the people will welcome a sovereign who will protect it. A king and a constitution, like oil and water. Go on, Monsieur le Marquis. Monsieur, I rest my case. Very well. Monsieur, we must now make our decision. May each of us respect this decision and set aside our personal interests for the sake of peace and the common good. Who among you approves the appointment of the Marquis de Lafayette? The court bows before the Marquis de Lafayette, Lieutenant General du Royaume. Louis de Bourbon, former King of France, in the name of King Henri, fifth of his name, in light of the innumerable crimes of which you have been found guilty, this extraordinary royal court sentences you to the ultimate atonement. The sentence will be carried out on the hour in its great mercy, the court will now hear your last words. My loyal subjects, since you must lead a lamb to the altar, since you must offer a sacrifice to this new France that you intend to found, I will be that sacrifice. How dreadful this world is, where beauty is doomed to fade and flesh decays. I found no consolation in this world. I vainly thought I was giving our souls the gift of immortality beyond our mortal bodies. The Grim Reaper was my sworn enemy. Influenced by the most awful of men, I believed that the genius of machinery could overcome death itself. Alas, I have lost this fight, and I'm branded with a mark of murderer. Life, even more than the crown, was heavy for me to bear. I have suffered too long under the thumb of nature, which I despised. As a child, I saw my older brother die. I lost my father in the prime of his life, and then my mother, who was even younger. My beloved daughter did not live a year. As for my son, the first of my heirs, I unknowingly gave him to drink from a poisoned cup. I mourn the death of these poor souls daily. My death will not unite us. Of this I am certain. For I, in my misery, have lost the support of my faith. So, Executioner, lay me down on this board of a tube. I will sleep now. Sleep at last, and not to dream.
As you wish, madame. Bonzon, have you lost your mind? The king wants us dead and has sent this unholy creature after us. His madness knows no bounds. There isn't a single subject in the kingdom that he does not see as his mortal enemy, not even his wife. What fate does he have in store for your children? Oh, he would never. Fine. Play blind and deaf as long as you like, Antonia. As for me, I won't let that demon commit one more crime. Gabriel, no! I order you not to. Leave us, Aegis. I must speak privately with Madame de Polignac. Very well, Madame. You struggle in vain, dancer. You're not long for this world. against its master. I am quite happy to concede this point, but what about the Count? Have you forgotten that he gave you life and whispered the order that animates you? Look how he runs, the coward! Do you understand what he has in mind? 
La pauvre enfant, sleeping so sweetly. She won't be dreaming for long now. Garçon! Adonais! Don't move! The time has come to set you free, Aegis. This whore's soul has poisoned your cogs for too long. Adieu, sad puppet. No! Auntie Devine, I don't want to die. Adonais. The sun is rising. And you have slept for far too long. The beauty of this world longs for you. Just as you long for its light. For you are like the flowers that open in the morning. I know you, mon ami. We loved each other. Vous en souviens-t-il? <laughs> you gave me your heart. So please, let me give you mine today. Vive heureuse, Atenaeus. For it is happily that I leave this world. This way, monsieur. No, General. You'll forgive me for choosing to hold on to it. In that case, my fate remains in your hands. Can you at least tell me where my detractor is hiding? The one who is spreading these charming rumors about me. He comes and goes. One day he's here, one day he's there. It would be pointless to try to confront him. Oh, no matter. I will not let this serpent continue to vilify me. I shall get redress for these aspersions in the end. Do as you wish, General de Lafayette. Goodbye, General Lafayette. Citoyen Marat. Madame? I'm surprised to find you here. Did you follow me? Didn't you know? The Duke's allies are always impeccably informed. Some even say that we have eyes and ears everywhere. What do you want from me? To tell you the truth, I can't wait to hear what you've discovered about the matter at hand. And I was afraid you might leave me in the lurch. You can never be too cautious these days. That's why I decided it would be better for me to come to you. You were right. Lafayette was behind this purportedly popular uprising. Aha! I've got him at last! But he had no intention of handing his men over to the King. His goal was to raise an army and command the troops himself. It doesn't matter. These troops would have allowed him to crush the Patriots and set himself up as a dictator. He lied to the people. He lied to the Assemblée Nationale. His time has come. All I need is for you to give me the proof of his treason. Here. The details about the operation are written in this manifesto. Madame, I didn't expect so much. The end of Mottier de Lafayette. The executioner has signed his own death warrant. I will now share these revelations with the people's representatives. Long live the Assemblée Nationale. Marat, ça par exemple. You're certainly a bold one. Monsieur, 
I have come to pay my respects. Mon pauvre ami, you must be out of your mind to come and defy those you so cruelly maligned. Maligned, you say? This remains to be seen, Monsieur de Mirabeau. I have here a document that its author has amusingly entitled Le Manifeste Henri V. It appears that the name Louis has fallen from fashion these days. Quiet, scoundrel, or I'll make you swallow your tongue! Come now, you wouldn't dare, my dear Mottier. Not when we're in such fine and plentiful company. Monsieur, in these pages, you will learn of the vast plot devised by the Marquis de Lafayette and his sinister conspirators. You will discover how our national hero orchestrated the so-called popular uprising that gave rise to the National Guard. Bonsoir, Monsieur le Marquis. Huh? You will also learn that he has proclaimed himself General-in-Chief in the hope of making himself King in turn, and that it is his lust for power to which the patriots who fell in Place Dauphine owe their tragic fate. C'est incroyable. You must believe it, cher monsieur, because to add insult to injury, this Tom Fool was daft enough to sign his missive. Par tous les saints. If what Marat says is true, this is treachery of the basest sort. Well, Monsieur le Marquis, do you deny it? No, I don't. The loathsome Marat speaks the truth. I wanted to create an army that would be able to rid our kingdom of our anointed executioner. Just as we freed America from England's choking grasp, I only kept it secret to avoid causing more chaos. Can you understand? You defied the people, Lafayette. This is enough to condemn you. So be it. You won't hear from me anymore. I leave the fate of the nation in the hands of the speechifiers and demagogues. I encourage you to say your prayers, gentlemen. For our end is near. As for you, rat, go back to the cesspit from whence you came. You should never have come out. I will gladly follow that order, General. Such is my pleasure that it will be your last. Monsieur, we have the king. It is now up to us to wield his scepter. In this trying time, crucial decisions must be made without delay. First and foremost, we must take back Paris. And how do we do that, mon dieu? There are automats everywhere, and they are constantly regenerated by their crimes. My strategy is the only viable solution. Monsieur Laclos' cannonballs filled with vitriol. And where will we find the means to carry out your plan? The city of Versailles is full of ateliers and shops. Moreover, as far as we have been able to see, the King's army has barely been deployed there, and it will not be too risky to look around. Very well. Now, regaining control of Paris depends on our combined efforts. Mais ensuite, once peace has been restored, what of the kingdom? This is indeed a crucial issue. Leaving the nation without a government would expose it to the greatest danger. Worse, it would condemn it to civil war. Eh bien quoi, monsieur? Can you not govern together? Unfortunately, the disagreements that divide our assembly run far too deep. That which we can agree is that we have been given a chance to choose the person who shall succeed the tyrant. I have earned the honor of leading this old nation a hundred times over. Allons, you can't be serious. Do you think we're ready to forgive your disloyal plotting so easily? I do not forget what I'm accused of, Monsieur de Robespierre, but you must consider my achievements. We are listening, Monsieur le Marquis. To begin with, I rescued the Dauphin from his father's clutches and ensured the dynasty's stability. The child will reign as Henri V. We will appoint someone with great wisdom to act as regent until he comes of age. Fie. The people do not need a crowned puppet. Yes, they do. Now more than ever before. Once the assembly has adopted a constitution, the people will welcome a sovereign who will protect it. A king and a constitution. Like oil and water. Go on, Monsieur le Marquis. Monsieur, I rest my case. That is quite the crown of laurels you've woven for yourself, Monsieur le Marquis. But your proven duplicity makes you forever unworthy of holding power. Then be satisfied, Monsieur, for I forswear it. Huh. Excellent. Cependant, 
There is one member of this assembly who remains loyal to both the monarchy and to the nation, and whose reputation has not been tarnished. If he agrees to become regent, I pledge to dedicate myself to his service. What do you say, Monsieur de Mirabeau? Oh, this is unexpected. <laughs> it would be an honor, of course, but I... Uh, I wasn't prepared for this. Allons, allons. Do you really think anyone will believe that? Very well, monsieur. Now we must decide. Who among you approves the motion of the Marquis de Lafayette? The court bows before the Comte de Mirabeau, Regent du Royaume de France. Louis de Bourbon, former King of France, in the name of King Henri, fifth of his name, in light of the innumerable crimes of which you have been found guilty, this extraordinary royal court sentences you to the ultimate atonement. The sentence will be carried out on the hour. In its great mercy, the court will now hear your last words. My loyal subject, since you must lead a lamb to the altar, since you must offer a sacrifice to this new France that you intend to found, I will be that sacrifice. How dreadful this world is, where beauty is doomed to fade and flesh decays. I found no consolation in this world. I vainly thought I was giving our souls the gift of immortality beyond our mortal bodies. The Grim Reaper was my sworn enemy. Influenced by the most awful of men, I believed that the genius of machinery could overcome death itself. Alas, I have lost this fight, and I'm branded with a mark of murderer. Life, even more than the crown, was heavy for me to bear. I have suffered too long under the thumb of nature, which I despised. As a child, I saw my older brother die. I lost my father in the prime of his life, and then my mother, who was even younger. My beloved daughter did not live a year. As for my son, the first of my heirs, I unknowingly gave him to drink from a poisoned cup. I mourn the death of these poor souls daily. My death will not unite us of this, I am certain. For I, in my misery, have lost the support of my faith. So, executioner, lay me down on this board of a tube. I will sleep now. Sleep at last, and not to dream. 